the glorious one has sent me against the nations that have plundered you, for whoever touches you touches the apple of his eye. Amen. Do you know what the eye does to the body? How important is the eye to the body? Very important. Imagine that that is how God sees you. You're the apple of his eye. That is, you are so precious to him. As precious as your eye is to your body, that is how precious you are to God. And so he will not let anything happen to you anyhow, right? Because you are the apple of his eye. And you need to know this and be convinced about it. The next truth says, I am God's friend. John 15 verse 15 says that I no longer call you servants, I have called you friends. When you come to Jesus Christ, you're no longer just, he's not just this big God that is far away. He's your friend. He wants to talk to you. What are the things that you do with a friend? You spend time with them. You share your problems with them. You tell them anything and everything. That is the same with God. That's the same with Jesus. He says, I no longer call you servants because if someone doesn't know his master business, he said, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made to you. Jesus wants to be your friend and you are his friend. He's not just this God that is so far, far away. He's right here. He's your friend. And he wants to be able to share with you his heart. He wants you to be able to share your heart with him and talk to him. Do the things that you do with a friend. That's the kind of relationship he wants to build with you. Amen. Amen. He wants a friendship with you. And you need to know that you're his friend. You need to know that you can go to God when everyone turns their ear away from you, when you're so down and out and you have no one to talk to, you can go talk to God Amen. about everything. You can say, God, here am I. Nobody wants to listen to me. Nobody understands what I'm going through, but I know you are my friend. And I know you can, I can talk to you and tell you everything and you will listen and you will give me direction. Amen? Amen. Because you're my friend and you, you know what's best for me. The ninth truth I have says, I am favored, I am highly favored. Job 10 verse 12 says, you have granted me life and favor and your care has preserved me. Now, what is favor? Favor is an act of kindness beyond what is due or usual. It means that you get something great happen to you which you don't deserve. That's favor. Favor is going to a job interview and not being the best, not being the most intelligent, but getting the job anyway. Amen. Because God's favor is upon you. And I can testify about that. Let me just give a, a brief history of, of, of God's favor that has been upon me. God has been so faithful to me and has favored me a lot. Um, before I moved to South Africa, I'm originally from Cameroon. And uh, while I was in Cameroon, um, I got married to my husband. He was in South Africa at the time. And you know, while in Cameroon, I was working. And when I got married to him, I had to move. And my family was like, oh, you can't leave your great job here, you know, and go move with your husband. He's, at the time, he was like a student, you know, so he didn't have a lot of money. So it was, it was a great concern. And I was like, no, but I can't, like, be married and not be where my husband is. It's just not, doesn't really feel right. So I trusted God, and I said, God, I mean, you brought my husband to me, so you obviously make a way. And guess what? His favor. Before I even left Cameroon, I got a job. Right. Yeah. I had a telephonic interview with a company in South Africa, and they gave me the job on the phone. Right. <laughs> so before I even traveled, I already had a secure job. That was just God's favor. Right. I mean, for them to forget about, to like ignore all the people in South Africa and call me in Cameroon and choose me <laughs> over the rest, it was the favor of God. Amen. So God has been so favorable to me. I mean, I've seen God's favor. And when we moved, when I was in, in, uh, in South Africa, I was in Cape Town, one of the cities, working in this company. And then my husband had to move again. And he got a better job in Pretoria, which is another town. It's the capital. And I came up with this. I had the same dilemma. I'm like, oh, God. Now I have to leave this job again. Because now my husband is moving that side. It's a better place. It's a better job for him. What do I do? As great as God is, again, he showed me his favor. I got 
two interviews in the new town, and I got both jobs. <laughs> then I had to choose one. <laughs> it was so amazing. You know, and, and I ended up choosing a job which was like next to my husband's office. So it ended up being so convenient. I'm like, oh God, you really love me. But I've, I've really seen God's favor in my life. And I can testify that God favors his own. You can't go for it. It just comes naturally because you are his child. And that is who you, need, who you are. And you need to have that assurance in him. Amen. The tenth truth is... Who, you, who are you? You are God's ambassador. Second Corinthians 5 verse 20 says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God has left us on earth to be his ambassadors. That's right. To spread the word. As I said earlier, if God didn't really care about you, he would have just saved you and taken you to heaven. Right. Right, but the fact that he left you on here on earth is because he has a purpose for you, he wants to use you in some way, yes. amen. That's right. He wants to use you to preach the gospel, he wants you to represent him on earth. What does an ambassador do? An ambassador represents his country in a foreign land, so you are a child of heaven, you are a citizen of heaven, and so you need to represent heaven on earth, amen. Right. You need to bring heaven on earth because you are an ambassador of heaven. Amen. So I just, I mean, there's so many truths in the word of God. You are loved. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrated his own love towards us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Imagine, God loved us while we were bad. While we were sinners, he loved us. Most of the time, we love people because of what they can do for us. We love people because of what we can get from them. But God came and loved you in your sinful state. He says, while you were still a sinner, God loved you. His love for you is unconditional. It doesn't depend on what you have done. It's not like the love that man has, which is dependent on what you can, he can get from you. God's love for you is unconditional. And you need to know this, that you are loved. That even if no one, even if you feel that no one on earth loves you, God loves you you Amen. and you need to know that this is who you are i am loved by god this is my identity in christ i am strong philippians 4 13 says i can do all things through christ who strengthens me there is nothing that i can plan to do and not achieve it right. if it's in line with the word of god Amen. because i am his child i mean god i mean this this scripture is also some a scripture that is so applicable to me People always ask me, how do you do all the things that you do? You're a mom, you have three children, I also have a business, I run my own business, and, and then I run the ministry, and then I do, it's 